Welcome to Coco's 2D Tutorials, brought to you by Bob Euland. For more information, go to bobeuland.com slash Coco's 2D. This tutorial is called Singleton Secrets. A singleton is an object used for handling global data. You should avoid global data whenever possible, but sometimes you must have them. For instance, when two or more objects need to share data that none of them owns. App delegate object acts as a sort of de facto singleton. Generally, we have only one instance of the app delegate. It lives for the duration of the application. It's accessible from anywhere via UE application shared application dot delegate. This fact that all objects can access app delegates makes it very popular for sharing global data. For instance, if two objects that don't have pointer to each other need to share data, one of the objects can write data to the app delegate and the other object can read the same data from the app delegate. So we tend to put a lot of shared resources into app delegate simply because it is so easily accessible. But as more and more is added to app delegate, the result is a spaghetti code jungle. Bad solution is to let app delegate handle the global data. And the good solution is to create one or more singleton objects that handle the global data. Several framework classes are singletons. For instance, NS File Manager, NS Workspace, UE Application, UE Accelerometer, and so on. The name of the method returning the singleton instance is by convention shared class name. So if you see a method which begins with the word shared, you know that that is referring to a singleton. For instance, shared file manager, shared color panel, shared workspace, and so on. How do we create a singleton here is the interface file and as you can see we are declaring a class method called shared manager. In the implementation part we are implementing the shared manager method. Here is a static local variable called shared manager and if shared manager is nil, which it is the first time this method is called, the shared manager will be created and returned. The next time we call the shared manager, the shared manager will not be nil, so this is never executed. Instead, the shared manager is returned. So this code ensures that we only have one instance of the shared manager. If you're wondering about this line, a static local remains in memory for the life of the program, but is only accessible to one method. And this forces the client to use shared manager method to access the singleton. If you're wondering about this initialization to nil, when a static variable is declared inside a method, it's only initialized the first time the function is executed. 
In Coco Fundamentals Guide, Apple has a more elaborate code for making a singleton. That code is thread safe. You can use that code instead if you want. But if thread safety is not important for your project and you have control of your own code, then the suggested code in this tutorial is good enough. Let's go to Xcode and see how we can use a singleton. We are inside Xcode. Our task is to create three scenes. Main scene, first scene, and second scene. When the program starts, we are inside the main scene. There are two buttons in the main scene, which allows us to go to the first scene or to the second scene. There are also two black bulbs in the main scene. Inside the first scene, there is a button that allows us to go back to the main scene. But there is also a button called Done. If we touch that button, we will light the first bulb when we go back to the main scene. Similarly for the second scene. The main scene also has a reset button that allows us to reset the bulbs. And our plan is to use Singleton to handle the global bulb array, which will determine which bulb to turn on and which bulb to turn off. We have two images in our resources, bulboff.png and bulbon.png. We have four classes in our project. Main layer, first layer, second layer, and array manager. The array manager will be our singleton. Observe that the other three classes import array manager.h. Here, here, and here. Let's go to the main layers implementation file. In the init method, we are creating three items that act as buttons. The first item is called Go to First Scene and has the selector Go to First Scene, which goes to the first scene. Similarly, the second item is called Go to Second Scene and has the selector Go to Second Scene which goes to the second scene. We also have an item called Reset that has the selector Reset Bulbs, which for now just locks Reset. In the first layers init method, we are also creating some items. The first item is called Return to Main Scene with the selector Go to Main Scene, which goes to the Main Scene. It also has an item called Done, with the selector Done, which for now just logs Done. The second layer is exactly the same as the first layer. It has a Return to Main Scene item and the Done item. The array manager is empty and in the implementation we just have an init method that does nothing. Let's build and run.
Here is the main scene with our three items. If we touch the Go to First scene, we are transferred to the first scene. And as we can see, it has two items. If we touch Done, we are logging Done. If we touch Return to Main Scene, we are transferred to the main scene. If we go to the second scene, Done, it is logged, and Return to the main scene. We can also reset, which for now just logs reset. That is all that is happening for now. The first thing we want to do is to add two black bulbs here. We will also add two yellow bulbs, but we will do it way outside the screen area, so they will not be visible. Let's stop. Go to mainlayer.m After Add Buttons Paste some code First we create a sprite using the bulb of .png which we position at 340 200 and give it the tag 0. Then we add a new sprite using bulbof.png with tag 1. We position it at 340, 120. Then we create a sprite using bulbon.png with tag 10. We position it way outside from the screen. And similarly another sprite with tag 11, which is also way outside the screen. If we run this, we can see our two black bulbs, but not the yellow ones. Stop. Now we want to use a singleton, which will handle a global array. This array will determine which bulbs to turn on and which bulbs to turn off. If an element of the array is zero, it will indicate a black bulb. And if the element of the array is one, it will indicate a yellow bulb. Let's go to ArrayManager.h and paste some code. Here we are declaring an array called BulbArray. It will be a property and we are accessing it through a class method called SharedArrayManager that returns a pointer to the shared array manager singleton. Let's go to the implementation. Paste some code. In the init method, we are creating our bulb array and filling the array with zeros, indicating that all bulbs are turned off to begin with. And here is our shared array manager method. With our static local pointer called Shared Array Manager. The first time this method is called, the Shared Array Manager is nil. Hence, we will create it and then return it. The second time this method is called, the Shared Array Manager will not be nil. So we are just returning the Shared Array Manager. So this code ensures that there is only one instance of the Shared Array Manager. In other words, Shared Array Manager is a singleton. And that Shared Array Manager handles the bulb array. Let's go to the first layer.m. 
and instead of logging done, let's do something more intelligent. Paste some code. First, we get hold of the array manager by sending the share the array manager message to the array manager clause. And then we use the array manager to get hold of the bulb array. Having the bulb array, we can replace the object at index 0 with 1 to indicate that the first bulb should be turned on. Similarly for the second layer. Let's copy this code, go to secondlayer.m and paste. But this time we are replacing the second element in the array that is object at index 1. When we go back to the main layer, we want to be able to show the new bulb status. And we can do that by trapping the onEnter message. So paste some code. First we get hold of the array manager singleton. And if the bulb array has the value 1 at index i, then we move the black bulb outside the screen and move the yellow bulb inside. Let's test this. We are going to the first scene, touch the done button, return to the main scene, and as you can see, the bulb is turned on. Going to the second scene, touch the done button, return to the main scene, and as you can see, this bulb is also turned on. We also have to implement the reset button in order to turn the bulbs off. Stop. Instead of logging reset, Let's paste some code. We are getting our array manager singleton and setting the first element of bulb array to zero and also the second element to zero. Then we turn the bulbs off by moving the black bulbs inside the screen and moving the yellow bulbs outside the screen. Let's test this. Go to first scene, touch done, return to main scene, go to second scene, touch done, return to main scene, then touch reset. And as you can see, the bulbs are turned off. Thank you for watching.